Do you ever feel trapped inside a universe and there's nothing else out there except glass and lights and a camera staring at you in the face? <laughs> Anyways, this is another question from Vincent that I really um, loved. And it's kind of funny he posted it on a... Or well, here's a question. Sorry this has a little to do with the video. It was to my 2019 video. But as I've watched your videos, it's become increasingly apparent that you are are devout in your faith and that religion to you borders on science in terms of credibility. I recall you saying that God slash faith has really come through for you in times of need, which has led you to your conviction. But do you ever wonder if the things that happen in life are merely coincidence? I guess it's that's a bit Sorry, I guess that's a bit of a silly question, all things considered, but I just wondered where that confidence and affirmation comes from. How are you so sure? So this is an awesome question, Vincent, and I'm going to start this off with a Bible verse from Romans 8, 16. It is, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And this is an aspect of a lot of debates that are unfortunately can't be explored because it relies on the on the experience of the individual, the believer. Sure, we can go on and debate and debate and debate and debate, but there's an aspect, a very personable, personal aspect of the actual interaction with God himself, with those whom he has called out of darkness, and it's a constant pursuit. So there are elements and actions in life where, where you would think, or you're questioning, is it a coincidence? Um, sure, you can maybe put that in there, but then there are so many other just personal nuances of just um, personal revelation that he is revealing himself to us as believers. And this is where I kind of joke, it's like, I, for me personally, I should either be on drugs because I have, I would then be schizophrenic or whatever, multi-personality disorder, because I actually feel the separation between myself and God living coagulatively inside of me. And that sounds weird, but it's like other believers have this same cohabit uh, cohabitation inside of them, and that is what draws us together because, oh, you've experienced it too? Well, now we can gather together because we now know that we've all had this interaction with, with God personally, and what you end up doing is then when you communicate with each other, there will be natural... Um, recognitions of who God is and you can test them with what the Bible says and what is common um, to other believers to see if other people are lying or if they are making up stuff or, or whatnot um, because people do make up this stuff and say oh yeah I feel God I feel God and like they don't feel nothing they just really <laughs> they're making stuff up and it's it's weird I don't know why people do that but um, or sometimes they want to feel something so bad and they're they're willing to bypass the truth um, to get this weird feeling that they themselves actually do conjure up inside of them. <laughs> um, but there, there are some very specific interactions, I would say, that I have had, and I guess I will share them. Um, when I was 18, for instance, um, well, goodness, there's, there's more than later than 18, or before or, or 18, but whatever, we'll start there. Um, it starts with me banging my elbow against a table. Um, like a sharp coffee table and my elbow immediately started to swell up and I couldn't move it more than like a 90 degree angle um, for some reason it starts there but then I had that's inspired me to have a, a meltdown of just like who am I and what's my purpose and this yeah 18 years old it was kind of in the midst of trying to embrace the INTP-ness of my mind and seeing how that actually creates it creates me or creates division between me and normal people and because I just see certain things and I have a natural um, I guess view for I can't just you know let things go and be cool and uh, it just created this odd um, division between me and people and so I start I, I had a shower and I this is where like all of my thinking goes when I take a shower um, it was probably for like two hours and I was just praying I was like God I have no idea why you made this made me this way I um, I'm always separated from people and but like I see these inconsistencies with people's behavior and how it leads them to certain destructive um, things and I have to like bring it out but then they hate me for it and I'm just like ah what do I do <clears throat> um, 
And then, yeah, many, or about two hours later into the fiasco, there was this very clear verse that <clears throat> was imparted to me, I guess. And I looked it up, and um, it very much resonated with what I was struggling with, but then also what my heart is and what I really do want to see happen and the reason why I act the way I do. Um, the good side of me, not the bad side. <clears throat> um, I mean, okay, so whatever. You had a verse, whatever. But then, later that night, I was like, dude, that was so amazing. And I was thinking to myself, I was laying in bed, and I, I remembered, oh, crap, yeah, I forgot my elbow was completely, you know, jacked up. And so I was thinking to myself, well, if something so strange as that interaction happened, what if I prayed for my elbow? And so... I mean, my elbow could not move more than 90 degrees, and so I just put my hand over my elbow and just prayed, like, hey, God, I pray that my elbow he heal, and um, <clears throat> I felt the pain just, like, melt right through my arm, and I was able to stretch my arm out, and uh, as, as if it was normal, <laughs> and that was incredible, and um, at, in that moment, I would recognize that this was a pillar being built, because if one thing happened without the other, it would be easy to consider one of them as as a mistake or a misunderstanding or whatever, but it was it was something that happened together and I will always remember that. And so as I go on with life, I, I remember back to that moment. Sure, coincidence, but I don't, you know, normally when you speak words on your elbow, hey, yo, be healed, doesn't normally happen. Um, so that was, that was incredible. Um, another one was, oddly enough, I guess speaking in tongues. I don't do this at often if at all, but, um, I was just kind of like, hey, God, there's this thing called tongues, and what if I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I know people do this, and I don't want to completely eradicate this act <clears throat> just because it's uncomfortable. So I was like, well, I'm just going to try, and so um, I just kind of sat there for a second, it was in the shower again, and then I, I said, Eloni Gabatha, which, if you were to look it up, Eloni is a name, which means like high, lofty place, and then Gabatha is like a high judgment seat. And it's both in Hebrew, one's a Hebrew name and one's, or, or yeah, Hebrew. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't know anything about Hebrew. And it just ends up being this like high judgment, lofty seat, you know, the judgment seat of God basically. And just kind of doing this proclaiming of, of who God is. Never speak, spoke Hebrew in my life. And so that was, that's just kind of like a passing thing. That was just kind of interesting. And that, so I looked it up. I was like, okay, so this, this thing came out of me. I don't know where it came from. And so what does it mean? So I just kind of, Eloni Gabatha. I'm like, oh, would you look at that? Another one was uh, when I was, <laughs> I was driving home from work <clears throat> and I was looking at my phone because a friend of mine, Josiah, if you remember from my videos, he sent me a message and so I was reading it. And I can't remember if I sent him a message or not, but either if I did, it was like, a, you know, talking to the phone and sending it that way. Well, behind me, a police officer saw me fiddling with my phone at a stop sign or stoplight, and he pulled me over, and I was like, oh crap, he's pulling me over for texting and driving, basically. This is not gonna be good, and I'm not in a position that can that can really, you know, pay for the consequences of this, <clears throat> because also a week before, <clears throat> I got a speeding ticket, and it was one of those roads where it's like you're off the highway, but it still feels like a highway, so I'm still driving as if on the highway, um, and a lot of people, you know, do that and they get knocked for it. Um, so that happened with me there just the week prior and I was like, oh God, I can't have another ticket, I can't have another ticket. And then immediately this voice came to me and said, you're not having it, you're not going to get a ticket. Okay, I'm not going to get a ticket. Then, well, okay, so I just had to sit there and be like, okay God, I mean, I, you, but it's, it's not like some mysterious voice. You know who this is that has just spoken to you. Um, when the more you get to pursue your life with Christ, you know God, you know his interaction, you know when he is speaking, just like how, how the nuances of someone walking into a room, you know who they are once you get to know them really well. But when you first know them, you don't know how they cough or talk or, or like walk into a room, what their natural walk sounds like. And so, but as you get to know them, like you're parents, for instance, you can just know who's walking down the, down the um, stairs just because you know them so well. And that little, you know, they, you just know them immediately. So it's that same kind of thing. The more you get to know God, you get to know his voice, I guess. So it wasn't just 
me going, oh, there's a stall. What does that mean? It's like, no, God told me you're not going to get a ticket. And so I'm just like, all right, and I'm not going to get a ticket. I'm just going to trust that however this, I don't know how I'm not going to get a ticket because this is, I'm texting and driving basically, and that's a big no-no. And so <clears throat> um, cop comes up. Give me your license and registration, I'm like, and he's like, you know, I pulled you, why you, why I pulled you over, and I'm like, yeah, and so he was very disappointed, and it was obvious that he's going to slap me with a big fine of some sort, um, and so I give him, give him my stuff, and I'm sitting in my car, and I'm just waiting, and it just seems a little longer than normal, and then eventually, um, he he gets out of his car, but it's longer than most police officers stay in their car. Um, and he comes out and he tells me, well, I'm gonna have to give you a warning because I guess his computer system wasn't working and he wasn't able to give me a ticket. And so he's like, well, but, and he scolded me. He's like, well, make sure you, you know, you don't do that and la di da And he's like, ah, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> and um, yeah, he just, he just wrote me a warning and I went along my way. Um, and, but that was just another time. I, I told that to a friend of mine. He's like, oh, that's just a coincidence. But it's like, okay, sure. But when you've experienced these interactions enough, there's something else interacting with you. It's not just your mind making these things up anymore. Because uh, it wasn't my mind thinking you're not going to get a ticket trying to comfort myself. It's, it was an outside source telling me that. Another one was I was going to YWAM, which is called Youth, which means, which stands for Youth with a Mission. Um, it's a missionary um, uh, school back in 2012. Um, I decided to go um, a little bit earlier than a month before going, and I needed to raise a lot of money, like probably four or $5,000, $6,000, um, because that's the school, but then you go out for an outreach, um, and you know, plane tickets cost a lot and, and whatnot. And, um, but so in total, it was a um, six month ordeal. So. Three months I was in Aurora, or Arvada, Colorado, and then the last three months I was in Kenya. Um, but I only had a month to raise the money, and I, I was like, okay, um, no biggie. I, I, like I really had no worries about it. If God's gonna let me, to if He's gonna allow me to go, He's gonna make the opportunity. And so I started working at Old Chicago's, which is just like an out. It's just a Italianish restaurant, just with pizza and stuff. I guess Italian's not the right word. It's just, yeah, a lot of pizza and, and whatnot. And I worked there as a dishwasher at eight bucks an hour. And if you do the math, eight bucks an hour for a month, that's not six grand. <laughs> um, so I sent out letters um, that uh, to be sent out to people, but I never asked for money. I just said, this is what's happening. This is how much it costs. I asked you to pray for me. And I just sent out the, the letters. Um, at the same time, my dad was kind of under the impression that he was going to support me in this endeavor and financially and he was going to you know give the money um to to me and i just go on my merry way <clears throat> but at that same time i think there was like he had two surgeries a car broke down and basically his whole uh, financial stability crumbled right before me going coincidence fine sure but like it's just funny it's these little things that um, that are part of the story that, that are not that shouldn't be taken so lightly. But um, but what ended up happening was that I was dumped with money um, by the end of that month, and I only made maybe three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars of it. Maybe not even five hundred dollars, um, but I easily had the the money to go and then also go to the outreach. And even some at left over to buy gifts for my parents and my and my brother, um, so that was um, pretty amazing. And yeah, and just as I go on with life, there's these little doors open up and they close. And and when I'm when I'm alone or when I need to talk, I just I literally just say, "Hey God, I I need to talk." And there's this presence that is there that um, you know is there, and it's not. It's not me just making something up for my own psychological benefit. It's it's me calling out to God, and He's there. Um, and also, I guess even another another story. I'm just might as well. Um, this would be the actual time of my my sal start of my salvation. Um, 
So let's say, like, so I'm gonna go through the first 19 years of my life. Um, I, I would say that I always recognized that God was true. When I go to look at how people interact and behave and the things that they choose to do versus um, the, the good that they choose to do, the bad they choose to do, and there's the natural psychological side effect. And if you just kind of follow the pattern, you just I just kind of recognize that, okay, when people adhere to the pure strand of what is considered Christianity, they benefit so far the most from it. And so I'm just like, okay, yeah, something about this God is true. But I would never, but there was still this war inside of me. There's there's this heart condition that puts at war with, with you know, who God is and whatnot. Um, and so even as I try to do certain acts, I was always denied those acts, which was weird. Like I was, <laughs> I would try to do certain sinful things, um, but I was taken away from those and not practically not allowed to do them by, I would say, God shaping me along the way as I, as I, you know, grew up. <laughs> um, and then eventually I decided, okay, after high school, I don't know what to do with my life, but I know that I grew up with this um, thing that I say that God is real, I should do something about that because I feel like I am at a, a fork in the road where I can really take it seriously or just kind of do what I want. <laughs> and so I decided the best way was to actually take this seriously is to go on a missions school, which would force me in a position to really hone on what I truly believe. What do I believe and why do I believe it? Um, so I went there and it was during the first week. Um, we were going over the gospel, which is nothing new. I grew up in the church. Um, I've heard this a gazillion times if, and, and everything else. Um, but there was a moment where it clicked, not just cognitively, but whatever opened up allowed a presence to be imputed into my spirit, imputed into me. And that presence immediately cut away certain sins that I could not drop on my own. Um, certain um, angers, because I was a really angry guy, um, and also um, just disrespectful to my parents and just um, other just little uh, just agitations and, um, and stuff like that. And so when my parents saw me <coughs> after that instance, they, they knew something happened. Something took their kid and flipped him around. And ever since then, there has been um, a very strong, continual presence. Um, it says in the Bible, whoever, when he starts the good work in you, he will finish it. And so it has been this journey along the way that he has been continuously pursuing me um, and sharpening my conscience and turning my will to his will and whatnot. Um, but that, that, that would be called, that, like what happened there was Jesus... Um, um, coming into me because you know he died on the cross for our sin and so me recognizing that um, opened the opportunity for God to justify my position through through Jesus's righteousness so that he may dwell in me um, that's a big mouthful but that interaction that moment is not something I can make up um, because really, I wasn't even doing anything other than just sitting there, just kind of scribbling on a piece of paper, and all of a sudden, you know, this thing comes and flashes into my spirit, um, or into my being, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It's it. It wasn't me trying to do anything. It wasn't me trying to make myself feel a certain way. I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, someone hit me in the bat, in the face with a bat. I mean, that's how that's how um, obvious it was, and outside myself. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question. It kind of I answered your question, your question in, in story, and I hope that that helps because it's a it's more of a personal thing. Um, I we could go into the more of the the we could go into the the factuals um, and why I intellectually believe and whatnot. But in the end, that's not what truly that's not what lingers on. What lingers on is is the story of what happened and how I was interacted with and how I felt through these things. If you, I mean, if anyone still wants to consider them coincidence, 
so be it. I mean, I recognize that this this topic is far more um, far more difficult. Not far more difficult. Far more than just the facts themselves. Um, facts can't really facts solidify what you believe. They don't always change someone's belief. Um, that's what I find. And so it's probably better to go a different route. So um, I hope this benefited somebody out there. Um, please share with me, if you are a believer, what other what things that you have experienced in your life um, that has continually um, concreted your belief in God um, or just, you know, just things in life, just how he provided or how he healed or how he whatever. I would love to hear your stories. I would, now I guess I'll see you guys in another video, another life. You never know. But what I do know is that there's more of it out there than just a crystal ball or something. I don't know. <laughs> Peace out.